Hey everyone, it's Lynette Chanda from Thrive Anywhere. Today, we are going to check out a new Canva-like design tool called Creative Fabrica Studio. Is it time to drop your Canva subscription for this newcomer? Let's find out. One of the things I notice is when I click Add New Design, you have all these options, a lot of design apps have this. But as I pace through these, so they are standard items. I see posters, planners, calendars, flyers, and I pace through print. I see all these different things like decal, a journal, a label. But I see things like paper bag, a photo book, and when I go to craft products, I see mug, acrylic tumbler, wraparound, kids bookmarks, magnets, stickers, water bottles, wall calendars. I go to print on demand. I see these merchandise options that I can create already preset templates for me. Not the template, but the sizes. And in social media, this is pretty standard. I go to online and digital, I see these types of headers. And I even found something new I didn't know. Depop is a place where you can sell garments, basically vintage clothing and um, unique clothing. And then I start to see weddings. And the weddings, I see things like seating charts, save the date, magnet, invitations, enclosure cards, RSVP, rehearsal shower, thank you, table numbers. And under business, I see Zoom covers, virtual backgrounds. Just by going through this list, if you're not sure what kind of creative digital products that you can make, you can basically just paste through this and find something. So let's take a look at the templates options. Now, once you open it, it will give you an overview of all the templates available. At the point of recording right now, it's almost Easter. So you see a lot of <clears throat> Easter pet designs here. And they're showing me what's popular. I actually came in here last week and all the Easter items were still not here. So that tells me that they are actively adding new things because when I was here last, most of the items here were related to graduations and birthday parties, which is also around this time. So we have book covers. Facebook templates and all these items here. If I were to search for something, let's try wedding. I see I have two options here. From what I have tried, a number of search phrases like planner, that's where I was headed for. I can see that the template options are still very limited, but I think that's okay considering from one week to another, of course, this is only my second week looking into this thing. It seems like they're actively working on adding templates. Okay, so let's look at what other tools we have here on the sidebar. We'll come back to Spark AI shortly. Take a look at graphics. You'll see that some of these items are pro only. And if I add it to my design, I will have a watermark in my design. Let's delete that. You can add text, of course, like that. These are predefined font combos. And you see so far the design is pretty easy to understand. And when I click on something, you have the options panel here. I can center, do right justify, full justify, or left. I can make it bold if there's an option to, to make it bold. I can make it italic, underline, all caps if I want to. 
and I can also change the uh, letter size spacing and line spacing if I wanted to. I can also set it to align to the center of my canvas to the left, right. These are all again pretty uh, standard features. I can also transform into curved text if I want to. So all this looks pretty good. And then there are also elements just like in Canva. We have some of these here, forest leaves, abstract shapes. And every one of these have got a pop-up menu for me to change the color, sizing, uh, transparency, and I can duplicate this. And I can also select both and group here on the side using this layer panel. I like that the layer panel here is to the side and it's easily accessible. Let's ungroup this. I see that when I click on this repeat on background, it will create a pattern for me. And that's pretty cool actually. I will have to say that. Now, if I don't want that, I can undo. However, I also notice that if I go back and select both and group, this repeat option is not available. As it says, you can only repeat single elements. All right, and then we have photos. You know, all these different photos here. Again, some are pro only. They also have an option for background. I can go through this list. I can also, I believe, do an eyedropper tool here to change the color of my background. And I can add a background like that. I can add a full color background like that as well. Or I would just say, you know what, let's go for a simple white. And then we have patterns. I can select any one of these patterns. And these pro options are here right now. It's only because I haven't logged in yet. And I just wanted to show you what's available and not available with the pro option. And to get the pro option, you only need to subscribe to the all access membership. And that at this point of recording is super crazy pricing. I'll drop the information and pricing in the description below. They do sales pretty often, so if you miss it when you're watching this, stay subscribed to my channel and I'll let you know, or better yet, I will notify you via email. If you would pick up any free item from our store, again, you will find a link in the description. And that way you'll be subscribed to my emails. Of course, just like any other tool, you have the option to upload. I have to log in or sign up to upload anything. That's okay. And there's also a draw option. I'll have to try this draw option using an iPad to see how well it works because naturally my drawing with a mouse is just going to be rubbish. And let me just click delete here. I'm going to get out of the draw tool and we'll bring back the select tool. It has a lock option, which I like. So when you lock it, you can't move it. But I think, let's see, you can still change colors, but you just can't move it. Okay, let's take a look at what's this here on the top. Oh, show rulers. That's very nice, especially you are des if you are designing for print. You can see all these different rulers here. Now take a look at this little pop-up here. This little pop-up can be toggled on and off. I can take it off and I can bring it back by clicking that. It just tells me what size my canvas is. So right now it's a 1080 by 1080 pixels, which is an Instagram post size. And this layer panel here can also be toggled by clicking that X icon or by clicking this icon to bring it back and you can just toggle it on and off here as well. So I don't want to show the rulers. I want to hide it for right now. Okay, let's try out the Spark AI option, which is probably the most exciting option that we have here.
we have, it looks like, three options. This magic wand thing is a background remover. And this is to generate images. And this one, I'm not sure. It looks very similar to the generate image option. But yeah, let's see if we let it do the default here. It seems like it's finished generating, but I don't see anything at this point. I'm not sure what happens. Let me click over to the image. You know what? Let's create an image. Again, nothing seems to have happened. And I wonder if it's because I am not logged in. Okay, so let's try this again, logged in. Now here we are logged in and because I wasn't logged in and I couldn't save, so I'm starting fresh. Nothing that we added earlier is on my canvas. And I know I'm logged in because I see my profile image right there. Let's go back to Spark AI and oh, now I see all my previous generations that I, cr I tried to create. These are not the generations that I just tried to create. These are my previous generations. Okay, let's try this again. Let's go here and let's do the images. Now we see that it has generated these type of images for me. I could add this, I think. No, there we go. It just took a minute. That's pretty cool. I like this other Renaissance image type, but it's not complete. Okay, so all of this is pretty cool still. I like that we can add it directly in here. And let's see what the image is here, what the difference is. Okay, let's try my own and let's do a covering page this time, right? So I'm going to write to unicorn and vector illustration. And I'm going to click on coloring. And when I do that, you see it just adds text to the prompt. To clarify it just a little bit, let's click Create Image. Now that it has finished generating, the weird thing about this is it doesn't show up here on top. You have to actually scroll down. And here we have it. We have two options, this one, which is pretty nice, but you see there's a lot of gray around here. And I don't think I can get rid of that yet. I can crop, I'm not sure how this, oh, I like that crop circle, quite honestly. That's pretty nice. And then there's this one, there's still a lot of gray again, and it's incomplete. So at this point, I think what I'll probably do is regenerate it until I get something clear and precise, or I'll retry the prompt. And then there's also this, which we have discovered is a background remover. Sadly, I cannot drag and drop the generated image into the background remover. I wish we could because that would be perfect. But I guess if you wanted to do that now, you can share and download as a PNG and then re-upload it back in here to remove the background. Let's try removing background on something. Hey, okay. looks like the remove background option, I have to upload an image to remove the background. I've got an image here of a craft. Let me drag and drop this. And the moment I drag and drop, it will instantly try to remove the background. And it did the job pretty nicely. I can save it and place it in the canvas. I can, I think, upload it to my uploads, I imagine. Let's try saving and placing. So it will place it directly onto whatever I'm working on, which is pretty cool. And finally, over on this side, I have a vector image tool. 
I'm going to drag and drop this image here. And it will give me a comparison of the original and the vectorized image. I can download it or I can also add to studio. Let's do that. Vector added to studio uploads. Okay. So if I go to studio back here, let's open this and let me go to my uploads. I will see the vectorizer options here. I've also tried different things before. And when I click on it, it will place the vectored image here. One thing I've noticed here is you see that when I uploaded this image, it contains a number of elements. However, it does not break apart each element here so I can select it, which normally when you vectorize something, you can break apart these things, but apparently you can't do it here. So it's just something to take note of if you are uploading an image to vectorize to basically cut it out first before you vectorize it. And this is a previous vectorizing one of my graphics that I made. What I showed you today is not something that I made. It's just a screenshot to very quickly show you what the vector tool does. And what looks like we've covered pretty much everything here. Just a few small things here like dark mode and the share. Earlier on, you might have noticed that there's an export option. Now I have tried this export and it creates a JSON file which is not image file. It's more of a data file that when you open up, it won't mean anything to you. I'm not sure why there is an export option here because there is no way to import that JSON file. I have tried to upload it in here, but you know, nothing happens. So I can only imagine, cross my fingers and hope that at some point in time in the future that they will allow us to create designs and export it and then sell those designs in Creative Fabrica. I really hope that is the option. In fact, another cool option I'm really hoping that they would add is whatever that we buy in Creative Fabrica, we can automatically see a panel here that we can click to pull up all of the elements or the images or the fonts that we have bought that we can just drop it directly in the canvas here. But those are uh, naturally suggestions that we can put in for them. And that's it. So far, this looks like a pretty good starting point. I will definitely keep an eye on this up and coming tool. Creative Fabrica seem to be constantly improving their options, their tools and their offerings. And I'm sure that at some point it will be just as useful as Canva, if not more, keeping in mind that this tool is a number of years behind. So they have a lot of catching up to do. But everything looks very promising for right now. So what do you think? Personally, I'm not giving up my Canva team subscription right now. There's still work to be done with Studio, but I'm also waiting expectantly to see what else they will add to Studio. Having said that, the tool is free to use with an all access membership at Creative Fabrica. And at this time, they have an amazing deal going on. Check out the description below for details. And thank you so much for watching. Before you go, make sure you subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. My name is Lynette Chandler. I'll see you next time.